personnel who is actually authorized crime invest analyst or something ensures the the coordination to perform the following tasks so this is how the coordination is laid out defining and securing areas where some evidence is present collecting physical evidence preserve package and submit it to the laboratory for further analysis this is the actually cooperation ch chain that has been uh, you know followed or we should keep a mind or keep a note of first if there is a particular crime scene that has been taken place um, um let me tell you an example of a murder okay so there is a murder case that is going on and there is a there is a house okay in the room the you could say the body is was you know found in the bedroom okay and what they will first do is they'll actually first see define they'll actually scope out what are what is the is the particular area where the crime scene is been taken place secure the area means only authorized person can enter that area now then collect the evidence physical evidence and what is physical evidence and different types of evidence we are going to have a look at that also right preserve and package the evidences so uh, for example what could it lead so they could they could be biological evidence blood uh, hairs uh, you could say fibers growth fibers or um, hair samples and all those other things dna fingerprints i mean etc then um, another things another things that could you know lay out could be so there is a broken glass near to that you know the body that is an, another piece of evidence which is to be collected right there is a smartphone inside that person's pocket which needs to be collected correct these are the types of evidences and submit it to the laboratory nothing the above noting sorry not nothing noting the above terms an investigator tries to recreate and reconstruct the elements involved in a crime here the call quality in which the evidence is preserved leads to a successful outcome okay now there are a lot of examples which i am going to give in the later uh, sections or you could say the probably the next uh, you know classes that we are going to look at especially dealing with digital evidences right but the one thing that you need to keep in mind always is ensure that whatever you are actually taking as an evidence should be quality evidence the more quality evidence you take it it leads to a better conclusion for the investigation okay now understanding the value of evidence the following four evidence aspects are to be considered regardless which type of investigator is you know involved in any type of case regardless of the investigator regardless of the case always make sure these four unique properties regarding evidence that always understand any evidence is unique any evidence is unique at times you can see there is already written there is an overlooked piece of evidence which may we may overlook it but it could lead to a most crucial part of the entire investigation okay now it has low probability of occurring by chance in investigation world never you know think like it's by chance or just by fluke coincidence while investigating or while working as an investigator nothing is a coincidence this is the mindset that we need to prepare nothing is a coincidence there is no coincidence anywhere so you know we thought okay for example again recollecting that you know murder state over there right now for the example um the body is laid down okay and uh, around the body in the room itself the body has clothes clothes uh, assume that there it, it's a male body okay it's a male body and um, um assume that the male has wore blue jeans black t-shirt okay and uh, a bit above a bit you know a, a bit aside of that um, at a at a, at a few distance there is a small uh, red cloth or or you could say uh, something like that a small piece of cloth or something right now always think that it is not by chance because it could be it, it could not could not be only to the female who is belonging someone to the male or it could be of some other male it could be of some uh, spo another spouse of that male who have been you know murdered for some reason it could be the actual piece of cloth of the suspect or the murderer so 
these are the time you know these are the possibilities or these this is how, how vivid you should think while de- dealing with looking at the evidences that it is unique and it has low priority of occurrence that it has it, it's not there by um, coincidence it is inconsistent whether it's digital evidence or physical evidence never consider evidence as to be proper and 100% full fledged legitimate okay any piece of evidence it is an evidence okay it's not uh, it's not a statement or a full fledged proof it's an evidence it's a forensic artifact right in order to solve a particular crime case it's not a single piece of evidence that will lead to a big conclusion so there are a lot of evidences that that has to be linked up there is entire chain process that we have to tie up in our mind so never consider evidence as inconsistent there is there will be something or some uh, somewhere lying there or you know you have to connect the chain in order to complete or in order to conclude the mystery behind that why this piece of evidence was there over why did we even found that over there right then it is a physical match always try to now this is something regarding physical crimes always try to look out that is this evidence resembling to some person or a suspect maybe in terms of dna maybe in terms of the cloth example that i said right so does anyone from the house of that guy was any girl who was involved was she wearing a red cloth something like that or there was no one then this is of some other female right so try to analyze the evidence in terms of the person an investigator must comply to this points so while dealing with evidences even an overlooked clue may serve as the most crucial information piece okay okay yeah everyone is there collecting why and when of crime scenes okay uh, we will understand why and when of crime scenes that why actually these has been conducting and when these are these are the steps that are been conducted collecting physical evidences helps the investigator to recreate the crime scene and establish the sequence of events these evidences corroborate statements made by the victim or the suspect or the witness what does it actually mean that actually this whatever the evidence that we are collecting it actually tries tries the investigator to helps the investigator to understand that whether whatever the statements are made by the suspect or the victim or the witness are these statements actually liable for matching or not are they even any true or they are false now here are a few of the general crime scenes where crime investigators or crime investigations are started in case of violent crimes in case of suicides fires thefts accidents right a lot more examples are there right uh, i have not added all the ones like you are well enough to know what are the other types of crime scenes listed below are a few of variety of evidence which can be collected biological evidence latent print evidence latent print in the sense fingerprints and all footprints and tire tracks tire tracks are you could say the you know for example there is a vehicle passing by a muddy road so you know the tire leaves an impression in the mud on the ground below so those are tire tracks or there is the the tire and muddy so that wet and muddy tire is you know embracing the the mark the impression of the tires on the road so those were tire tracks tool and tool marks drug evidence trace evidence trace evidence leading to some person digital evidence so as of now we are gen- actually we are discussing a general examples of different types of crime scenes crimes and uh, uh, crime investigations or all in general as and on we will move move on into the chapter or is you know as and on we'll move on into the course in the upcoming classes that will come in the upcoming classes uh, right slowly slowly step by step we are actually going to focus and completely move towards the last category that is digital evidence okay and which a lot of digital evidence aspects i'm going to share with you how a normal crime scene can also link up to digital investigation there i'll also share you some examples okay case scenarios we'll try to understand the type of evidence collected will vary according to the type of crime so 
depending i discuss a murder case it could be, be another sort of crime where there is different sort of evidence been that has been collected listed below are a few common tasks followed in order What happened? there is you know national requirement or something like that at the same time apart from these there are various other you know aspects to be very honest um we look, we we just saw that you know we actually you know photograph the document at the scene so certified crime photographer is also a certification ha huh? that specified that fellow which is certified crime photographer that fellow is responsible or he is a verified person who can actually take photographs of the crime scene in that way right it's not a normal candid photograph that we take of ourselves or the selfie we have been trained into vigorous types of photograph right you know if this is this this is the thing over here this is the way we want the photograph right certified crime photographers are also there right under iai and all they were though, although they have different certification bodies also right although the crime scenes are quite dynamic in nature and there is not a centralized process or stages in order that one needs to follow still mentioned below are a few steps that may be involved okay so crime scenes are completely dynamic okay and you shouldn't any way expect that there is a centralized documentation or a formal framework or something like that it totally completely depends on the crime scene and the nature of the crime and how dynamic is the process going on and what are the resources available to the law enforcement agencies all these aspects do actually matter so while understanding or while you know seeing the crime scene or while you know hearing about it it sounds a normal crime case but when actually as an investigator or as a law enforcement agency someone actually tries to go and deal with it then actually we have to understand how uh, deep process it is so establish the scene dimension and identify the potential safety so scene dimension means again it comes the same point that where are the locations where the crime has been taken place and identify potential safety in terms of health and all those other things so for example if there is a chemical leak occurred okay in a science laboratory there is there could be some you know uh, hazardous gases nuclear reactions that have been uh, nuclear gases that have been released so health scenarios and potential safety are to be considered established security means only the authorized one should be allowed plan communicate and coordinate among the teams the investigators analysts and all conduct a primary survey okay what do you mean by conduct a primary survey it means 
to actually you know look out for the first traces of evidences to see all the things you know what is there what is not there okay a uh, document everything basically and um, try to reconstruct the crime scene then document and the process and the scene that you have reconstructed and all conduct the secondary survey which is also is a review phase that review the things that you have done and add the uh, add a few of the things that are to be added or that are changed again or you know which is different from the actual crime scene or which you observed or some modifications or removations or modifications is needed okay then record uh, record and preserve the evidence so recording what we have done on how to record in case of digital evidences evidences we are going to learn about chain of custody okay i am just you know you know telling the terms which are there in the, the next uh, you know, i could say in the upcoming classes but yeah and preserve the evidence evidence should not be tampered or it should not it should not not uh, you know diminish right and and here we go with the basic discussion of crime scenes a very easy chapter we just actually are understanding how the thought process works behind crime scene investigations any doubts till now uh, you could just give me a thumbs up or comment in the chat <laughs> can we just unmute and talk uh, pardon sir i'm saying can we just unmute yourself uh, ourselves yeah, yeah definitely talk? sir it's the platform is all yours okay cool so um i was just wondering how many people are participating in the cyber crime uh review and survey and other stuff okay so are you talking about general or you're talking about the class that is going on just general yeah general sir uh, to be very honest now it again depends on which is the crime scene that has been taken place right now um, to be very honest the main uh, in case of any crime scene that i'm talking in general we we'll actually uh, learn in the second module when i'll open the second module we'll learn about that there is a first responder okay who will be the person who is actually liable for responding as a first officer it could be the law enforcement agency or it could be a certified private investigator working as a first responder going before the crime has been taken place to review the crime scene and all then comes the analyst then comes the forensic investigators right um you could say detectives uh, there could be photographers uh, certified crime photographers right um then it depends then it depends on what are the evidence collected okay so now for example if there is a biological evidence collected so it will go to some uh, it, it will go to a laboratory where it, there will be a specialist who will doing analysis on the blood and you know understanding the dna patterns fingerprint analysis so there will there will be also there will be a fingerprint examiner okay who will try to understand the fingerprint patterns and all if there is a pen drive that has been found so it will go to people like us who are dealing with digital evidences or who are dealing with cyber things over here right so this is how sir the entire process goes then again all these things is not stopped over here it will again go to some senior aspect or it will again go to the uh, nodal officer or the you know judiciary who is been present over there then it will go to the court of law then the entire case will run up again if someone needs to involve eye witnesses victims even the suspect at times in the court will involve then the case will be solved and in meanwhile all this you know all these things when these persons are involving it is not something that you know it will you know just uh, go so easy and hand by hand right now for example um, we have to link up the entire chain okay we have to actually link up the entire chain all right now for example if i just talking i'm i'm just talking a general example because we have to think like cids and all <laughs> after this course right so that that you know again take that poor guy <laughs> who has been murdered well, sorry, right? Right? um oh. there we find there is a pen drive uh, okay in his drawer so number one that the first cloth that i said it will go for into the laboratory to analyze you know the fingerprints if there are there on the cloth and all right the blood strain will go to into the science laboratory again uh, to the biological lab for understanding the blood patterns if there was some drug uh, present drug traces present in the blood or some some kind of anesthesia or something like that was found in the blood strain again then the pen drive will go to the people like us 
or the digital forensic specialists then it will be concluded that the pen drive had some you know deleted data and the deleted data was there was you know some um, sensitive photographs of a female with this guy right again it will lead to a conclusion that probably this guy could have uh, blackmailed that female and the female have done this or else this could be a point that those are some fake videos and uh, the female is the victim and the guy was trying to torture and something somehow just happened and the female is involved uh, uselessly and being suspected right this is how it goes again different kind of stories will come up and in order to stories we'll again have to you know collect and relink the evidences that have been found right again then how it will be linked is that the same female in the video who uh, like you know that piece of cloth that we found as an evidence does it belong to that female itself was that piece of cloth uh, the, the what's that you know cloth found in that video is there any scene in the video where, where there is that cloth or something okay what if that female you know says that denies that to accept that the cloth is mine then there is another female involved right so i hope sir you are getting an idea what i'm trying to say right i know it's kind of a theoretical form a theoretical form but yeah this is how the entire scene goes yeah absolutely i get it my question was more around basically how do you know what uh, bureau you need to call basically so this is comes as a team i believe right exactly it's completely team based but the very first yeah. person with the first responder then i right? see i see right because yeah. there is no single person who is liable for any you know conclusion over here yep right so there are specialized yep. person in specialized domains right so investigation is very dynamic and a very broad field over here and there are specialized people in fact sir there are handwriting specialist and um, graphologist there are criminologists there are criminal psychologists who think like criminal and what the criminal is thinking in fact we are going to in the upcoming course in the upcoming sections of our modules there will be a particular part where we are actually going to learn about cyber uh, sorry uh, criminal psychology also that what makes a criminal mind vulnerable what makes a mind human mind vulnerable to act commit a crime right so yeah uh, yeah yeah uh, yeah i understood that i just was thinking based based on uh when you have the crime basically um you kind of call to one of the department bureaus you know you come into the crime scene you're trying to collect all this evidence and then basically from that place you never come to the to the crime scene again basically you kind of through through your bureau you're trying to map what is lacking and what kind of experience you needed and you're trying to connect with the people who are responsible this kind of area right exactly so connecting the dots together yes yes right, and that's right. why i was connecting thinking basically dots. how you can uh, define basically how many people could be involved in one crime crime scene investigation this is was my kind of question because you know when you have the murder then you probably have the special bureau special department and the right. people who are linked to that the department they will be automatically called let's say yeah so someone needs to to collect the the the, the liquid some something needs to collect like the blood and the lies and i get it but when you have something like uh, for instance uh, harassment for instance what uh -huh. led to, to uh, suicide mm -hmm. how you can do this basically because you don't have a lot of evidence uh you know on the crime scenes because it's all already happened but you need to track down what kind of activity where to bring to this point exactly now sir coming to the question um see to be very honest i am no one to tell a specific number of the people still uh, you know by seeing the crime scenes or by understanding various scenarios or by seeing the real life examples that we read day in day out uh, if we could get an idea that at least you know even if a crime has been taken place even there is a small amount of crime minimum of 3 to 4 or 6 people are actually involved at the crime scene place and those four or six people do have different works one will be the nodal like the lead officer uh, one will be the first responder who will come you know before everyone 
um one will be you could just say as in you could say um, um a constable in india it's known as constable okay so one will be a constable kind of thing who will do day to day task will you know go out and ask the neighbors and all right and um, i hope this answers the questions and the next question that you said i took an example of murder and now you are asking me an example of suicide in that case how it could lead up to right now sir yeah. in case of murder crimes in case of this i'm again uh, sorry in case of suicide okay i'm taking this example as you said let's take an example of suicide in these kind of crime scenarios here it will more be real, reliable on the physical evidence rather than traceable uh, physical and traceable evidence the trace evidence rather than any digital evidence or secondary evidence or something like that the reason is it is first we have to conclude the analysts have to conclude that whether it was real or suicide or whether it was a murder how actually sir when uh, if you want i'll just you know send you some reference regarding that also in the whatsapp group if you just try to understand in terms of um, biologically mm. there are certain scenarios okay that uh, if if on depending upon the person's height so for example your uh, my height uh, you can say an xyz person the xyz person's height is 6 7 6.7 okay so there is a calculation scenario that okay so this is the height 6.7 of the person xyz based on that how much pressure is needed how much force is needed and uh, how much you could say ground uh, the distance from ground up till the you know the foot level is needed in order to choke up the neck and prove a suicide apart from that there are other signs if it was a suicide then in certain way uh, there the, the eye should be slightly you know open in a you know uh, not entirely open but you could say slightly dimmed in a closed way right like partially open i am not exactly sure what it is it's, i think it's partially open right there should be uh, vigorous neck choke lines right if there are not then someone has forcefully you know uh, you could say um, you could say attempted or forced the person to you know die or to suicide right are there any other body marks over there also another important thing was there anything in the body that was found in the saliva samples was there any something mixed in the body in the dna that was found or something like that there uh, you know before the suicide uh, there was some kind of drug given um, and that the drug that poison is killing that person and then the you know the suspect is just you know uh, hang uh, has this you know hang or you know laid out that person on a rope right also what was the stool you know on which tool did the person stood up to suicide that also sir matters over here w- were there any finger you know footprints on those tools were there any fingerprints of any other person on that stool apart from the person who have been suiciding right so i think you got the point right sir i mean it it answered your question yeah absolutely but i was more interesting not on physical evidence but what led to this point so more like reconnaissance i would say so for instance is there that per- did the suicide you basically mm-hmm. see that already the body it, he's dead right so you measure right. the whole thing uh, but for instance what he harassed what he's bullied you know what happened basically when he did. yeah right so i'm right. kind of interested do you have this kind of lead generation to just to understand what led to this point so that person made this you know uh, decision to go away basically right now sir uh, now the question for you itself right as you know you are thinking like correct or you are actually you know thinking uh, like an investigator now that's absolutely correct and like i'm glad and happy um, now a question for you sir all mm-hmm. this what i said is in the terms of physical and physicalities and you know the on site premises right the crime yeah. scene premises i can tell you sir this suicide can also be linked by digital evidence what if we prove that this suicide was a suicide or this suicide was a mental pressure using digital evidence can you sir link how it could be how it could how you could think at that point see now you are not at the crime scene okay you are mm-hmm. just doing you are just trying to do a background profiling or recon digitally yes and this is going to be another de- done by another department who has the skills or it's a responsibility of the same person who was respond who, who was the first responder or exactly how this is could be graduated 
right now i'm just giving an example now um a, a example that xyz person did a suicide but now leaving you know the leaving the crime scene okay let's not talk about the physical terms leaving the crime scene only the physical analysts and the investigators are doing their job on the actual scene the back end stuff these security analysts or these you know investigators cyber investigators how they will think this aspect let they do their work let them do their work meanwhile these people will do a back profiling or do a recon of this particular xyz guy reach out all the social media accounts um blogs websites posts whatever likes dislikes interest even try to enter into the account with permission because we will see practically that even if you uh, get an access to a google account it's just like you're getting access to the entire life i don't know how many of you people have tried that to see what data google is storing about you you can easily see that we are going to do that in that exercise in the course right so yeah. then that particular person will try to analyze what that person will try to analyze what are the likes interests that this person was showing online did this person anything right about you know there you know there could be any various factors that uh, tagging someone on social media or was there something that the, this person is running a blog page where he's posting some, some sad quotes did this person post anything about that i'm sad or something like that this, was this person listening to youtube songs which are sad and romantic songs it could be that something a hard break has led into this incident right now catch the suppose right so this is how the non physical layer will work then yes but this is done for the same department but not for the same person right i mean yeah. but there are some differences the data analyst and other stuff exactly so there is a lay, way uh, way uh, you know broad differences uh, yeah in case of the law enforcement agencies the department will be the same but those departments have various units right unit will be different mm-hmm. okay right? correct so there is crime unit and there is cyber crime unit and both are completely different okay right? so only one person does some some specific stuff no no no, no sir now it again depends now it again now sir it could be a possibility that all these things that i am saying these are the things it could be done by the unit also or there could be a possibility that the person or the victim okay who is suffering or the uh, reporting person or the witness who has reported the crime he or she is not, not satisfied, satisfied or is not getting the appropriate results on him by the uh, you could say um, um, you could say assigned agencies example now in here in this case it could be a private single investigator also who is looking the background digital activity yeah again in some aspects this private investigator may need to you know cooperate with the law enforcement agencies if uh, you know if the private investigator doesn't want to cooperate with the law enforcement agencies then the private investigator will actually you know try to look out for all the digital level things that are that he or she can do at his own level or powers and duties right for example i can hack uh, uh, i can just not hack sorry i'm just going into offensive mode a bit i'm thinking of hacking but we are at investigation sorry so we can actually you know by um, providing a consent form take up the password of the google account of the person or by providing a consent form we can actually try to penetrate in that account correct so it could be a team also But in most of the time, sir, if you just involve when I'm if I'm talking about private part, uh, private sectors, then there is a group of one or two investigators only who is acting over here at this point. That you know the back end footprinting. Yeah, I understood. Um, my my question was basically if I need to you know to to make my own investigation basically based on I'm not satisfied with some you know results from the law enforcement. so who mm-hmm. are those people that i need to connect to so they can be more effective you know, because the, if there is a department and it's like 20 people so you know uh who 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 has the responsibility to say basically that you know this is what we found that this is happened because of this or something right. like that now so to answer to this question ha uh-huh. ha go on because because so many uh questions around that who 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 is who is what and you know the people are pointing to to other people basically and you never know this 
uh, you know, who had the, the reputation, let's say. And right, right. this is, was my question, basically, because if you have like, uh, you know, 10 people involved in this crime, investigation, and, you know, there might be some um, hacking involved or something like that, they may have ability, they may have department which has that ability to trace that activity, it's absolutely fine. But, uh, I mean, if you don't have this kind of information and you're trying to get to the point that to understand you know, what happened in reality. Who Who is responsible to give you this? It's not some, some, someone who is from PR office or something like that, but who has the results at the end, let's say. Right. So just trying to ask that who we should actually then uh, uh, actually hold, that who can give a liable answer yes. to us, right? Yes, right. yes. In that case, sir, the answer to this question will be given in a much better way when we move in the ahead sections of the course, right? That this okay. part will be very clear in the further sessions because the further upcoming sessions or the further classes that we'll study, it will be every point we'll discuss about police and private investigator in those terms. Still, giving out a generalized answer, actually there will be two person, at least two person, the main two persons from whom we need to get this information. And both the two persons shouldn't give the different information, right? They should give the same yeah. conclusion. Number one, the very first question you'll go and seek will be the first responder. Because he or she was the one who was actually present before some other came. And number two, go and seek for the senior analyst. Who has been taking reports from all the junior analysts and all. Because he knows every aspect that which junior analyst is sending which part of the evidence or which junior analysting analyst is dealing with which part of the investigation. Right. So at least these two persons you should cross verify. Okay. Thank you very much. And sorry yes. for the delay. No, no worries, sir. Well, I guess your evidence could have been, you know, in some other people's mind also and they also could get a broader idea about it. Right. So questions are always welcome. And uh, thank you. Yeah. So you have this module two, and uh, let me just how many pages are there? Over. Okay. Again, over here there are just you know seven eight pages. If you all if you all are comfortable, we just still have ten minutes. We can cover up. It's okay. For everyone. Yep. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. So here in this PDF, again, we'll just this some general scenarios and but more often we'll just talk about evidences as of now. In the third module tomorrow, we will see more evidences. Now, first we will understand. Okay, collecting evidence and you know, resulting and documenting and all is important. But if we are documenting it, what do we document? Or even if we are documenting and we know what should be documented, what are the things we must actually must document? They are the must things to document in the report. Now, again, this completely depends on the crime scene. But if I'm talking in general, date and time when the investigators arrive, weather conditions at that scene. Yeah, weather conditions do matter. Prepare it, uh, perpetrators point of entry and exit theory about movement and actions that were taken place list of evidence collected must be in the report list of photographs on the videos that were taken must be in the report vehicle descriptions diagram sketches of the crime scene etc it's involved subjects here it will it will include the suspect them and the witnesses all are you see the person were seized or collected in the investigation. Now about some terms and these are some of the definitions. Associative evidence. Any evidence that can link a person or an item to the scene of crime. That is known as associative evidence. All right. For example, there is um, the crime scene and that has there is you know a key that has been found and that key belongs to that um, particular person that, that that key belongs to the car of that particular person or Rish, you know the bike of that particular Rish, person 
are you uh, considered as an associate sharing associate the screen? evidence uh yeah sir i'm sharing the screen i'm not able to see no no we are uh, uh, everyone are able it to see the screen about. or it, it is visible yeah okay okay, okay so okay. i just sir just try to rejoin the meet yeah. and i ho- i hope that you know then the screen will be visible Yeah, the order is not followed over here. The order is not followed. Uh, I guess there is there is some mixed match that I've done. You know the evidences part down and then some between. Okay, but just try to understand there is associative evidence, there is biological evidence. What we'll do is we'll just first cover the evidence part. Okay, then we'll go to the other part. So you know we'll just cover these two later and just first we'll first cover the evidence part. So impression evidence. objects or materials that have retained the characteristics of other objects that have been physically pressed against them are impression evidence okay so for example impression evidence best classic example bullet marks on the wall so there is this wall that is an object the bullet is striking the wall impression made by the bullet due to the pressure that is applied against them impression evidence Not examples which you can relate. Then, um, reconstructive evidence. Reconstructive evidence allows investigators to gain understanding of the actions that took place at a scene, such as broken pattern, a blood spatter pattern, bullet path, and shoe print. So you don't be confused. by the impression evidence impression evidence so in that case will be the wall on which the bullet is struck so the wall will be the impression evidence here the path so the bullet is going through the wall and where it is going or where it went the path of that bullet will be reconstructed it will actually help to reconstruct the crime scene to reconstruct or you know to create an impression of reconstructing the crime scene in the mind right so blood blood spatter pattern means it is it has been observed that you know the person is bleeding and the person you know walked some few steps so you know wherever he walked there was in you know, blood stains or you know there was you know f- the blood uh, feet feet samples of the blood so you know the feet is all the footprints are all covered in blood and that bloody footprints are there right so uh, these are you could say reconstructive evidence tran tran oh, sorry yeah. transient evidence okay transient evidence means it means evidence which by its very nature or the condition at the scene will lose its evidentiary value if not preserved and protected so transient evidence is something which is dynamic which is um, you could say um, tamperable in action which can be tampered all right now can anyone just give me an example of transient evidence what can you think Forklift. If you know about digital, you can say anything of digital. If you know about physical, you can say anything of physical also. What could be an example of transient evidence? Anyone? Yeah. Anyone who yeah. wants to try? Yeah, it is shortly evidence, but I'm saying example. How in this case we have broken window. For impression evidence, we have a wall. What could be an example of transient evidence? At least I expect an answer digitally. Digitally, you should know. Okay, so probably it's you know ten thirty uh, p.m. in the night, right? and um, i mean like yes many of the people like uh, like me in india we have dinner and you know then we are in you know cozy sleepy dynamic mood to you know off to the bed um just try to re you know you could say um, re energize yourself and you know involve 
because i just make sure that you know, no one is you know sleepy or something because yeah this kind of things this kind of courses are theoretical right there is a theory also a lot but just try to think as an investigator what do you think which kind of evidence or any example now trust me i am a stubborn instructor to na i i do expect answers <laughs> i i'll just i'll just it's not something i'll just ask one or two times and i'll move on um i want to know what was the question can anyone give me example for transient evidence that it's it's an evidence if if it's not preserved it will actually uh, lose its evidentiary value it means it it may it may diminish or it may lose the value or it is tamperable it can be tampered easily acho Uh, exactly it could be uh, any more any more good example anything flammable basically yeah anything flammable okay so let me give an example in the digital world it's very simple in digital world um i know it's a wrong term to refer over here but it is also known as volatile evidence and what is volatile ram yeah right that should be struck and in physical terms if i talk talking about transient evidence what if the blood is mixed with water and the water is draining off that also becomes a transient evidence because if the blood is mixing with water there is there will be no value of that evidence that the blood sample won't be help in any way right that is transient evidence again so i'll keep asking this kind of questions in between ha huh? so yeah cool now let's talk about the previous terms apart from the evidence that we missed so alternative light source okay what is alternative light source a special light source that emits visible or invisible lights at various wavelengths to examine in certain artifacts Uh, properly, such as finger planes, clothing fibers, etc., etc. Uh, the devices which emit UV rays and all, all those other kind of things are. I mean, these are the devices. That is, this is a device that that is basically there. You know, is it ultraviolet? Pardon, sir. Is it ultraviolet? Right. Yeah, uh, sir. It's, it's not like specifically bluish. just only emits ultraviolet, but there are various you know light sources that it can emit. ultraviolet it could emit it could limit various light source uh, depending upon the wavelength and all and what is the need right now um for, for example i have example for this one huh? for example um i'll just discuss a small case okay so uh i think i should discuss in this way um, i just forgot what it was yeah cool okay i think i just forgot the case but um what are the there was some case wherein if you mix blue and yellow what do we get we get green right blue and yellow if you mix we get green right so there was a case i just you know forgot it was um, in you know one of the shows um, that i have been watching in which there was a particular kill offense that was there and the criminal's car uh they can say was green in color or something like that and eventually they find out the green is just an hint right they are just trying to refer to you know some terms the blue and yellow and uh, something like that there was a mod dummy model build up and um, you know when they actually you know put it some light source on it it turned out green you know by mixing blue and yellow i mean Uh, I'm sorry, I just forgot the example. But yeah, these are the devices which emit special light sources. That is the term that we should know, right? Crime scene, any physical location where crime has occurred or is suspected of having. Suspect a person who is thought of capable of committing a crime. Alibi, who is an alibi? Statement of where? What is an alibi? I mean, not who. What is an alibi? It is a statement of where a suspect. During the crime incident was where a suspect was. Like that. Uh, there is a word no? missing over here. Was. Okay, okay, okay. 
so where a suspect was yeah. during a crime incident the statement of that is alibi oh, a complay uh, a complice i was just trying to say compliance i just got into other security term but it's a complice okay a complice is a person associated with someone suspected also we we you just we just missed out this one testimonial evidence oral or written statements given by people who witnessed the crime to police or to the uh, court of law so oral or written statement testimonial evidence right uh, eye witnesses right all those other things first responders these are the initial responding law enforcement officers or any public safety official or service provider or a private investigator arriving at the scene prior to the arrival of the investigator in charge so before even the investigator arrives the first responder will be there to analyze the scenes now coming to the main part digital evidence as i said you know there are a lot of things you know will slowly 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 move towards digital aspects digital evidence is defined as information and data of value to an investigation that is stored on received or transmitted by an electronic device actual theoretical definition in simple terms it is nothing but just an evidence which is collected from electronic sources this evidence can be acquired when electronic devices are seized and secured for examination now when we are actually learning about digital evidence these are again a few things that you know we need to keep in mind how we you know said that it is you know it it doesn't it didn't occur by chance it is inconsistent right that the same way it is digital evidence is latent means it's hidden we need to find it we need to dig dive we need to you know deep dive into the things to, in order to acquire the digital evidence just like fingerprint or dna evidence it, it's it's latent okay it it's not something visible so clearly it it can easily cross jurisdiction borders quickly and easily right in fact committing digital crimes is way more easy than committing you know physical crimes today at least right because we can do anything anywhere anyhow in the world just by a click of a button so it can it can cross the borders quickly and easily digital evidence is very easy to be altered it is very easy to be damaged and it it is very easy to be destroyed with very little effort that you know we learn in anti forensic techniques you know which criminals do use and it can be time sensitive such as the ram again over here right so time sensitive is the characteristic of digital evidence again now private investigators and you know the role play that they need to keep in the mind private uh, investigators well, play an important role in assisting individuals on for identity uh, uh, some of the duties involved uh, helping uh, to find missing persons or performing research for legal uh, financial uh, or criminal uh, investigations it is very important to keep these three things when working as a pi research uh -huh. you could be investigating lawful records family essentry or lead a historical yeah, verification on a task competitor after your exploration you will actually dissect current realities to discover relevant data for addressing a case so continuous research background verification reconnaissance basically research every time i you know teach something to someone i always say research is the key the more you research the more you lead to the solution so in nasan pi research is the key to be very honest to actually realizing or discovering the relevant data right then what are the next two terms interviewing part of fact finding methods involves in interviewing the people to gather necessary information these people may be relatives missing individuals spouses friends someone who have missed it could be eye witness or has someone any other relevant information neighbors anyone through these interviews we have to combine our own research that we have done to gather evidence to solve a case or present as a court evidence surveillance if you are hired by an individual organization to find out the activities of a person you have to conduct surveillance this involves watching a person without him being aware to see where he goes and what he is doing and report your findings back to the client you can learn some of the techniques and surveillance methods in criminal justice education classes and all right this is how they have been you know teaching and you know criminal justice is kind of a nano degree and all those other things which they undergo 
right now in case of survivalence again it is very easy to do serv- to do survivalence in digital world and in digital world not as an investigator but as a common people common people call it as talking <laughs> right have you heard this term talking similarly as a pi we don't we won't use the term talking but we will use the term reconnaissance we will do recon we will do osent so that is survivalence in the cyber world right so yeah you know people are famous like you know stalking today is not even considered as an offense although it is an offense if you know done in a wrong manner right it's just like you're spying someone in the cyber world without his or her permission right so we are you could say uh, official stalkers when it comes to the digital world right so this is how it goes and here is the end of second module itself right uh, what i'll do is i i won't be wait for the edmodo platform you know to be up and all yeah these things you will also get on edmodo platform as i said but still i'll share these things as of you with now only uh, in edmodo also it will be available and here also it will be available yeah open source intelligence techniques you are ac- absolutely correct uh, sam sir and uh, i have been working since 4 years into osent i have been working with uh, you know in my state law enforcement agencies also with them for osent so you know i'll enjoy talking a lot about osent in the upcoming sections and all so i have shared both the modules over here okay so we are already 10 minutes ahead of the class ending timing right and uh, that's all everyone for today's class i hope you actually enjoyed this class and this is how the entire class will go right in case if you are feeling that i am going too fast or too slow or i am being boring you can just let me know anytime i am open to your feedback that's all for today um for the ones who are in india sorry for the delay have a good night and for the ones who are outside india have a good day ahead and see you tomorrow the same time 10:30 pm ist thanks a lot everyone thanks for joining Yeah, also the meeting link will be the same yeah meeting link will be the same in fact i'm going to add the meeting link in the uh, you know whatsapp group description only so that we don't lose it okay thanks a lot bye